la 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 I can't, I can't do it, man. Hello and welcome to the stream. My patter was an attempt to, um, the patter being the thing I say between the time I hit the start stream button and Twitch confirms that I'm actually streaming. There is a, uh, about a four second, five second delay there. Uh, the patter I was trying to do this time was the Underpants Gnome uh, song from South Park. La 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 uh, And they actually had some lyrics too, but in any case, <coughs> Cough, cough. Okay, in any case, we're going to continue now with what we were doing before, trying to find constellation boundaries um, using the much simplified algorithm that someone else had created. Uh, for details, check local listings for times. No, no, no. Previous streams or whatever. Uh, so we're going to be converting this, uh, hopefully, into an easier way of looking up constellations. And then we're going to put it into the C, you know, into C, so we can use it with the C Spice libraries. And then we're probably just going to give up at that point, uh, because really, you know, no one really cares. But okay. So what we need to do here is for every um, declination, we need to uh, record um, which pairs of right ascensions um, we associate with that declination. Um, so what we're going to do here, so we need to actually turn this into, I think, my bounds, and these things here will be bounds. Um, so what I'm saying is for, you know, for the given declination minimum, the, the right ascensions are, this is really ugly. We're going to say the right ascensions are RA min to RA max for this given, as we're reading this uh, array four, four elements at a time, um, you know, the, uh, and the four elements are, of course, the minimum and maximum uh, right ascension, the declination minimum for a given constellation, and the name of the constellation. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to encode that like this, and then over here we're going through, um, let's see, I need to be a little bit careful here. Um, okay. Um, let's see. I think I might have goofed there somewhere. Um, yeah, and I guess we also need to record a list of all the right ascensions and declinations that we see because we're going to create a splitting list, a grid of right ascensions and declinations. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we say the um, RA min is one of the right ascensions that we see. The RA max is one of the uh, right ascensions we see. Most likely, the RA max of one will be the RA min of another block, so this is redundant but harmless. And then dex, uh, dec min will be one. So this basically is going to keep track of all the right ascensions and declinations we've seen from this big list up here. And then we're going to loop through them, we're going to find the midpoint, and from there we're going to attempt to find uh, what constellation the midpoint is, and then we'll have the midpoints for some number of constellations. Um, uh, sorry, some number of, uh, of chunks. And the number of chunks, it turns out, is not that high. It's like 20,000 something. Um, quite, quite doable. Um, so, so that, that should help us. It turns out you still, we still need to do some work after that, but it's actually pretty easy after that. Um, I think. Uh, although honestly, with C, nothing is really that easy. Um, and I, I'm beginning to wonder if there might be an easier way of doing all this. Uh, certainly one way would be to look at every possible, um, the, the right ascension and declination lines are never more than three minutes of, uh, you know, they, well, let's find out. Um, it's a third of an hour. I think they go as low as a twelfth of an hour. And in terms of declination, I think they can also go to a twelfth. So if that is correct, then there will be 12 times 12 times, because there's 180 degrees um, of declination, and there are 24 hours of right ascension, and I kind of wish we that, that worked. Um, so we could have a file that's 622080 that might actually make it a lot easier to look up constellations. And now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I'm wondering if that might be the best idea. Really kind of wish I thought of these things before I started talking. Um, 
But we can do it. A, well, actually, that might be that might not be too bad. I might be missing something here. There might be some some very horrible thing that I'm not seeing, and um, in that case, um, so let, let me, that's actually not a bad length file to have these days. I mean, maybe in the olden days it would have been bad. Certainly not the Python approach where they just use only the right ascensions and declinations that actually show up. Um, but now. God damn it. Um, okay, so now I'm sort of curious as to what the uh, least common multiple of the right ascensions is. Um, God only knows why. All right, so let's see if we can find that. Well, I mean, the reason is if we can, if we can sort of... Um, Okay, 240. These are, by the way, in 36 hundredths. So, um, so for 5, 10, and 240, 240 is divisible by 20. So they all look like they're divisible by 10, but not by a bigger number. 51, I'm pretty sure, well, it's divisible by 3, but that doesn't really count. Um, actually, maybe it does. Are these all divisible by 30? Um, let's find out. Um, let's just make sure, first of all, we, it's a little bit weird because we're using the standard error here, but I think this should work. Okay. And I think this should work too. Um, so it looks like if you divide them by 30, damn, that doesn't work. So these are not all multiples of 30, they might all be multiples of 60. Ooh, that, that might be, it might be worse than that, though. All right, this is Pomodoro time, but since I just started, we're going to skip this uh, Pomodoro this time. Um, we will go ahead and do it the next time. Pomodoro is when I take a break, just to make my mind, be, I don't really know what, why I do it. Okay, so clearly we do not have these all being multiples of 30. Let's see if they're all multiples of 60. I don't think that's going to be true either, to be honest. No, if they're all multiples of 120 might be the, the case here. Um, I might be going the wrong way. Sorry, are they all multiples of 30? The answer is no. The next thing to check would be 15. Are they all multiples of 15? And that seems to be... No! Damn, that was so close. Only two of them aren't. Um... So, are they multiples of 10? I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Honestly, I think that's going to be problematic. Are they multiples of 5? Wow. Not even. So let's see what this is a multiple of. It's not a multiple of 5. Um, I could have sworn I fixed Cal, but anyway. Is that a multiple of 4? I don't think they're all going to be multiples of 4 either, to be honest, but let's see. Nope, a whole bunch of more. Are they all multiples of 3? No. Are they all multiples of 2? Come on, give me a break here. No. Well, then they, they are all multiples of 1, I think. So So 3600 might be the absolute lowest number you can multiply them by and still get something that is always um, an integer. So the calculation we're going to do here is 3,600 times the number of hours, which is 24 times. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and debug the uh, declination, see how many of those we have, and see what's going on there. Let's see if, uh, let's just print them out regularly. Are these all, ooh, are these all multiples of 100? I'm going to bet you anything they're not. But if they are, we're in good shape. No. Um, are they all multiples of 20? think they might be awesome so they're all multiples of 20 um, if they're all multiples of 20 we're gonna have 3600 times 180 over 20 which means they're all multiples of uh, let's see 20 divided by 3600 whatever that is um, 
I think that's... a hundred eightieth of a degree, that might actually be correct. So now we will have, um, so then we will have, um, so we said they're all multiples of 20, and because the numbers can go up as high as this, or there's that many different numbers, 20, god damn it, we're gonna be multiplying by 32,400 which maybe is now getting a little bit too big. Okay. And so our file size, oh, motherfucker. Much, much bigger than I thought. That's going to be 2.8 terabytes. That somehow doesn't seem right, though. Um... So if they're all multiples of 20, um, is, that, is there a way 32,400 of those suckers? And then if they're all multiples of 20, we should also have, um, well on the other side, they're all multiples of just, uh, what is it, 1 60th or something really horrible. Um, are there just multiples of one? I, I'm getting confused, but I think, yeah, that's, regardless, it's going to be a very large number. Um, let me double check that, I guess, by, I'm going to put my faith in Mathix again, I don't know why. I don't know if Mathix can find an LCM, but let's see if it can. I, of course, meant to say a GCD. Okay. So what we're looking for is the GCD of the right ascensions. And then the GCD of the, um, of the declinations. So let's go ahead and actually um, do that again. My unfortunate suspicion is that the... Uh, Great, the greatest common divisor of the right ascensions is simply one, which means we have to store every possible value of right ascension. But who knows? I could be, I could be right. Yes, I, I said it. I said I could be right. Okay. Okay. Then we will just uh, go into test one here. We need to change it a little bit. Okay. Get rid of this garbage here. Uh, list equals da da da. We're going to change the endings to um, okay, do that all the way. And then do this. And then do that. And I guess I could just cut and paste this into Mathix. Because apparently I'm a, a, a masochist, not a sadist. Okay, find me the GCD of that list, please. Oh. So I cannot do this. However, I should be able to do this. Yep. So basically, of all the possible 86,400 values of right ascension, we cannot really skip over any of them because apparently the greatest common divisor is one. So we do need to store all, if we were to go with this method, we would have to st store all 86,400. Okay, now for decks I think we can do a little bit better than that. Um, okay. And we're going to say list deck I guess equals this. We replace regular expression, the end with a comma space, not that one, but yeah, there we go, all the rest of these, except of course here at the end, do this, do that, do that, and here we have a list of decl possible declinations. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in there, and I think the answer to this is going to be 20, 
is my is my guess. Apply GCD to list deck. 60, they're all divisible by 60. I'm impressed. I don't know if I should be, but I am impressed. Um, so for that, there are 180 degrees. We're multiplying by 3600, but we only need to capture every 60th, 10,800. So that might actually be still be doable. Um, actually, it probably won't be. Um, and I'm pretty sure these th these numbers are going to give us a number that's way too big to store in any reasonable sort of way. And I think that's 933 million. Yep, close to a gigabyte. And even if we compress it, it's way too big. So we are going to have to go with a little bit uh, smarter uh, algorithm where we just look, we only count the right ascensions and declinations that actually occur somewhere in the list, not, not every possible uh, delineation of, of latitude and longitude. Okay. So I think this is, let's make sure that we're actually getting some you know, reasonable values, but then we're going to have to go through the, um, the right, the find constellation method, which tells us what constellation this given square is in. So let's see, and we're just going to do less this time. Um, well, okay, 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 okay. Alright, so for each of these blocks, we're going to call a fine constellation on it, so we get the right ascension and the declination. Um, excuse me. Um, well, that wasn't really an excuse me, I was drinking some beverage there. Uh, let's see. And... To be honest, I think I'm pretty sure this can actually be the keys of bounds, because every single um, every so single deckman does get into bounds. So I think we can make this a little bit shorter. Don't have to need we don't need this. And so what we're going to do basically is we're going to look for um, um, the largest declination that is still s uh, smaller than deck. So this would be. And we might have actually just reversed X because we want to go from smallest to biggest, whereas it's sorted the other way around, uh, which is maybe a mistake. In fact, now nah, we'll, we'll leave it like this. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's see, trying to be too clever, while dollar sign A is still less than deck, uh, okay, hang on. so we're going from highest to lowest, and so if dollar sign I is less than deck last, we break out, otherwise we just keep going. And I think we can keep I around this long. Um, and actually, I think maybe that's not actually... Um, uh, now we need to do more than that, but let's, let's go ahead and do this, and then we need to do a little bit more than that. Um... That does not seem to be correct. Um, I guess I should probably have done this. I is one? Hmm. And this does not look correct, obviously. All right, well, we'll put in more debugging statements. Um, I suspect something is much more seriously wrong than this, though. Okay, well, that's good, that's good, that's good. Um, 
So I guess our decks are starting out like way at the beginning at the minus 90 level. Um, and so maybe I really should have reversed decks because we need to go in reverse order in both cases. So I think we can do this, and this, and then over here just say for IDEX. Okay. Comparing. Uh, hello, hello, hello! Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, Joffrey the Giant, as you can see on my screen here. Wonderful person, fellow Albuquerque resident, uh, streams about the city, and since I never go out and never show my face, if you want to see what an Albuquerquean looks like, or a Burkean, or whatever you want to call us, um, talk to, go look at Joffrey the Giant stream. And, and really, really, just like way better than I am. Uh, every stream is way better than I am, but, uh, you know, I don't actually know what that emote means. I think it's like, oh, okay, it's lol, I guess that's, it's like lol, but kind of different. Um, so anyway, go watch him. He had an awesome stream this morning that I watched. Um, he, anything you want to say about yourself, go ahead and advertise all you want on this chat channel. Um, you did, I think, mention that you were not much of a coder. Such subtle differences. Um, between our streams? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, your stream? Hey, hi, and you know, your stream? Awesome. Uh, lots of fun. My stream, so dull that it, I think, it can be used, you know, to cure insomnia. Um, although there is the risk that the patient will, you know, die, basically. Because it, 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 it's, it's, you know, between that dangerous level of putting people to sleep and simply making them lose the will to live. Uh, I don't know if this is ASMR. I could do ASMR, but I'm really bad at it. I have not 
himself, uh, both with his last name, which I won't say what it is, uh, and and um, and where he lives. He took, he could, we, we could easily find him. And um, earlier today, Joffrey went into a bar. No, that's not a joke. Guy goes into a bar. Uh, I actually considered meeting him at the bar, uh, but I decided against it at the last minute. One thing I've noticed is when I talk like this, I don't say um as often, because apparently it takes a lot of effort to say the word um, more so than I thought. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking that by doing the ASMR here, uh, I can make uh, the stream not useful to anyone. In fact, I'm pretty sure I couldn't listen to this stream, although I never listen to my streams, because they're crap. Uh, but if this somehow helps someone, uh, I'm going to have a sore throat within like five minutes from now. But if it otherwise helps someone, uh, I'll have to stop doing it because my goal is not to ever help anyone. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to see, figure out how long I have to do this before the joke gets old, or whether I'm actually enjoying it so I should continue doing it. Uh, this is how we used to talk during campouts in the backyard, as though no one could hear us, as though anyone cared what we were saying, which of course they don't. By the way, we're coming up on a multiple of 20. <laughs> That's like the theory we had about, uh, well, there's a famous director and I can't remember his name, but yes, he had that theory that if you do something, it's funny, do it longer, it becomes unfunny, but you do it longer, it becomes funny again. And as the Nightbot has just told me, every 20 minutes I get up and walk around to refresh my mind, and in this case to get a beverage so I don't choke to death, or whatever the hell it is that happens when you whisper for an extended period of time. So, I'll be back in two and two, which is what Bob Eubanks used to say when he meant two minutes and two seconds. Back in two and two. Okay. That was really getting on my nerves. Okay, hopefully by the time Joffrey comes back, he will be used to me using what I call my regular voice. Excuse me. Um, okay. So what we really need to do here... Uh, if I is less... I'm tempted to just use a different variable, but this is, should be an independent variable because I declared it with my. Um, so what we want to do here is if the uh, declination is greater than um, I, uh, if I is greater than declination, then we should want to go next. So here we know that I is less than declination. And now we want to look at um, the keys. Maybe be really careful here. This is a two-dimensional hash. So we want to look at the bounds of i. And the bounds of i is itself a hash. So we're doing this. And it, we don't really need to order it. That doesn't really matter. Okay. 
And for right now, I just want to sort of do a debug here. And then we do not need to do this. And I'm really getting really, really bad at, um, at commenting my code. Okay. All right, so let's see. Find declination, find largest declination, smaller than um, given declination. Okay. Um, for that declination, find out what boundary lines uh, there are. And so now, if I've done this correctly, which probably have not actually, um, and I guess because right now it's not really clear when this gets called, we will go ahead and put in a find con. We will do this so we know, uh, number one, we know when the function is being called, and number two, we know the parameters it's being called with. So we're getting closer and closer to this very ugly problem being solved. Um, okay, so 43 to 200, okay. Um, okay, so this is the, um, okay. Um, okay, so this is the declination value. We start out at this. Um, oh, and this is a, this, okay, so this is one that actually does intercept, and so that's what we need to do. Um, what problem am I trying to solve? That's a good damn question. Um, I don't really know, but I'll, I'll give, give it a shot to try to explain it. Okay, this is a map of the constellations in the sky. Uh, it's an equiangular map. Um, I have, in some way, these little boundary points. The boundary points are, you know, they, they, they're, they're on a grid. Even, well, let's see if we can see the grid. There we are. So th this is a grid. Um, and the boundary points, I have these boundary points on the grid in some form. Uh, the form I have them in, unfortunately, like, I have them in a billion forms, none of which appears to be actually useful. But let's, let's pretend that we, um, let's pretend that they're useful. So one way I found these, uh, so what I'm trying to do is, uh, given a point, somewhere in this space, try to figure out what constellation you're in. Now, obviously, if you're a human being or, you know, whatever, um, or you live in Albuquerque, either one, you can just look and see that this, ma my mouse point is clearly in Hercules right now. Over here, it's in Draco. Over here, it's in Leo, and so forth. Not difficult for if you're looking at the picture and you have a mouse. Uh, but unfortunately, we need to get a computer to do it. So what we're trying to do is we're saying if we get this computer, like the coordinates 15 degrees north, and then, you know, 17 hours uh, right ascension, like that'd be right here. How can we identify that we're in the constellation Hercules? Um, and it turns out to be, a, it turns out to be a real pain in the ass, but mostly because um, the format in which we have these, like these little lines that form the boundaries is extremely ugly. Um, it came from a book written by a guy named Delaporte, um, and for some reason, the International Astronomical Union in 1930 decided to make that the official list of constellations. So this isn't astrology, this, these are the constellations as recognized by astronomers. Now, clearly, someone should go back in time and kill the International Astronomical Union people who decided this, because it's really a horrible idea at very many different levels. Partly because we don't really need the concept of constellations. Um, they're really not helpful. Uh, they don't in fact even, um, they don't in fact even, uh, they're straight lines here because this is in 1875. Uh, so Delaporte's book was written, I don't know when, but he used the 1875 coordinate system uh, when we didn't actually know what the Earth looked like. I mean, they knew it was an ellipsoid at that point, but they didn't know exactly what kind of ellipsoid it was. They didn't know the shape of that ellipsoid. They came up with a definition of the ellipsoid in 1927, uh, which was wrong also, but it was closer. And then finally, when we got satellites up in 1984, the, the GPS satellites, 
uh, we got a really good idea of what the Earth looks like. Uh, but anyway, that that's an issue only because the coordinates that we use here are based on Earth coordinates, like latitude and longitude. Um, and it turns out that the way latitude and longitude are being mapped, you know, the idea is you take the uh, what they call the reference ellipsoid, uh, which is the ellipsoidal sh shape of the Earth, and you pretend it's a sphere so you can assign it latitudes and longitudes. But the, the way we pretend that has changed twice since 1875. Um, so that's, 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 the, that's another part of the problem that I'm not dealing with yet. That's the part of the problem I have to deal with later. Right now, I'm pretending that it is 1875, and all of these lines are perfectly straight. Uh, they're actually tilted now, um, and not in a nice way, because they're tilted on a sphere, so they're not just like, you know, straight lines. They're not like tilted lines like this. They're tr tilted in what are known as great circle arcs. So just really terrible, terrible thing. You know, now that I'm saying it, I actually kind of don't want to do it anymore. Um, but a lot of people, for some reason, are curious to know you know, what, what constellation is the moon in today? Ad and if they mean the astrological constellation, that's really easy to answer. If they mean the astronomical constellation, um, it turns out that's a freaking mess. Um, partly because this line here is called the ecliptic. This is the path of the sun. Um, and the sun does a pretty good job of staying on this path. However, the moon and other planets can be... Had <laughs> can be... Um, don't have to stay on this line. They can vary a little bit from this line. So one problem we have here, and by the way, I do know that the symbol for cancer looks like it says 69. I just found that, it's, I don't think it's supposed to, but it, it's just kind of interesting that it does. Um, so the problem is, uh, for the moon, for example, is, is a good example. Um, the moon can sometimes be over here in the constant called sextons, which is not nearly as exciting as it sounds, first to a sextant, which is an uh, instrument used for measuring angles, which isn't even one of the 12 or even 13 zodiacal constellations, if you include Ophi Ophiuchus. I don't know how that's pronounced. Um, and other planets can also be in sextants. And it turns out there's like five other constellations that the moon can be in that are close to the ecliptic, but don't, you know, don't, the sun can never be in them, but the moon can, other planets can. Uh, Pluto uh, is uh, not a planet anymore, but when it was, it has a very large inclination of the ecliptic, which means it can be look really far from the ecliptic. Uh, so it could be like, you know, down here in Hydro or Antilla. In fact, um, the comets and asteroids can be pretty much anywhere. I mean, most asteroids are in the asteroid belt, but not all of them. So, so really, you know, it becomes an FN nightmare, basically. Um, and it becomes an unnecessary FN nightmare because these boundaries are pretty much arbitrary. I mean, this guy, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, because the, the ecliptic is by definition the path of the sun. Um, everything else is tilted to the ecliptic. Uh, so it's a little, little bit higher, a little bit lower. We have the concept of, and you know, if you're if really into astronomy uh, or even almanacs, they will tell you, when the moon is above the ecliptic and comes down to touch the ecliptic, that's the descending node. If it's below the ecliptic and it comes back up to touch it, that's the ascending node. Da 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 da. And you can just go on and on and on with this. And when, of course, the um, uh, yeah, it is arbitrary. It is arbitrary. It is frustrating because um, again, this is this is um, originally the I mean the idea behind constellations was people looked at into the sky and they saw pictures. So, you know, we saw Gemini's twins, maybe, and not everyone saw the same pictures. In fact, Stellarium um, has a whole bunch of sky cultures that shows that different groups of people saw different pictures in the sky. Um, but, you know, there was some degree of, of coolness and interest in seeing pictures in the stars. Um, the guy who wrote the Curious George books, H.A. Ray, uh, said the pictures often don't look anything like what they're supposed to be in, in the IAU definition. He actually tried to make sense of it. He actually tried to make them look a little bit nicer. But, but that is if th they were pictures in the sky, that sort of makes sense. Um, okay, at the bottom of the map, sure thing. Um, not very exciting. By the way, Mensa is, um, 
this used to be Mons Mensa, Table Mountain. Mensa just means table. The uh, intel intellectual group Mensa gets its name from this constellation. Um, so, and Octans is the constellation at the South Pole. Um, and it stands, it's the Octant. And again, I'm just going to babble on about this. Um, it's not really clear to me why anyone decided. Uh, so seeing star, you know, seeing pictures in the sky, that's sort of exciting. You can get kids excited about that. Uh, if you're ever, you know, if you ever want to look at the stars and say, oh yeah, there's Leo the lion, there's Virgo the maiden, there's Cancer the crab, all that stuff. But for some reason, the International Astronomical Union decided they didn't need to be just pictures. They needed to be areas in the sky. They needed to be divided up like, like territories. Um, and the northern hemisphere constellations have some degree of, um, yes, <laughs> I think, I think you're trolling me now. Um, and I, I don't know if you're actually trolling me or not. Yes, I was about to say, the ones in the northern hemisphere are actually, um, yes, exactly. The ones in the northern hemisphere are pretty old. They're pretty ancient. The ones in the southern hemisphere, and H.A. Uh, Ray does mention this in his book, Basically, when uh, people sailed south of the equator, they started seeing these other constellations. I mean, you could see Sirius, the, the big dog, in, in Rome. But once you get to this far south here, um, you can't see any of these things from, from Rome. So the people who went on ships, yes, I know, Pavo the Peacock, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Southern Triangle, any freaking three stars that are not collinear make up a triangle. Th these are not very creative names. Oh, wow, wait a minute. Do you see Peacock in here? Hang on. Now I'm now I'm suspicious because wait a minute. I think you're cheating. How did you see Peacock? This doesn't say Peacock, this says Pavo. This says Muska, it doesn't say fly. I mean those are the translations, but yeah. Over there to the left. Do I believe you? I guess I sh mm. Okay. I'll I'll probably believe you. Oh yeah, that's right. Of course, you speak Latin, so you would, well you know Latin. I don't think anyone actually speaks it. Well, no, the Pope probably does. Right. So yes, Pavo the peacock, Musca the fly, uh, Volans. I think that's the flying fish, actually, not a volcano as you would think. Hydras, the little, little snake, not to be confused with Hydra, the big snake. But the, the real big problem here is, of course, um, these people, these you know, people who were mapping new stars, they went to the southern hemisphere. They suddenly started seeing. Okay, I, I was just kidding about trolling. I thought maybe you had another reference, or you knew a lot about this. Um, yeah, yeah. And some of these uh, this is another. I'm just going to rant about this for a while. A lot of these constellations had longer names originally. For example, Mensa used to be Mons Mensa, Table Mountain. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, do it. I will rant away. Uh, Centaurus, no, this was good. Now, it turns out one of the constellations that was defined was called Argo, the ship. And it was supposed to be the ship that Jason and the Argonauts sailed from. Um, but someone, and by someone I mean, I think Delaporte or the uh, Astronomical Union, I'm trying to find where it is now, decided it was too big. So they split it up into, come on, I'm trying to find where they are now. Come on. Um... There it is. Yeah, all of these here, all of the constellations in blue, well, not all of them. Pyxis is the compass. Pupus is the, I think, the bow of the ship. Vila sails. Carina, I don't remember what that is. Um, it got split into four constellations, basically. Um, so this is, again, a very ugly thing here that someone decided this sort of looked like a ship. Uh, and then, y I don't know if it does, but now they're broken into four pieces, which I can't imagine look anything like the pieces of the ship they're supposed to represent. Somewhere there is actually a map that has stars in it as well. Actually, this one does. So here you can see the Big Dipper in Ursa Major. Um, it's harder to see here because they, they've also drawn in the Milky Way. Um, but anyway, maybe you could translate these names. I don't... Uh, Vila means sail, yeah. Uh, Pixis, I'm pretty sure, is the compass. Pupus, I don't... I think it's the bow of the ship. Carina, I don't remember what that is. Columba is the dirt dove. It's, it's a dove that's presumably flying near the ship. Um, and Aaron Dennis is the river on which the ship is sailing. Isn't that nice? Poop of the ship. What does that mean, though? What is the poop? Is that the back, the front? Is it where people go to the bathroom? Poop deck always sounds like it's, like, I have no clue. Okay. I'm almost sure it's the compass. And some of these have longer names before, 
uh, like this Fornax is the furnace, but this actually was something else. And and there's a whole history behind this. Um, Bonoceros is the unicorn, and it has like literally no bright stars. It's literally, n and maybe that's like a really subtle joke that unicorns don't exist, but um, it's just the aft. So the aft is the front of the ship, right? No, no, aft is the back of the ship. I'm correct. The aft is the back. I know starboard is right, port is left. No, aft is the back. Okay, good. Stern is the is the forward. Stern is the the part of the ship that goes the other way. Um, anyway, so some of these used to have more useful names or longer names, and they got cut. They decided the International Astronomical Union decided to cut that. Uh, so they suck. Um, and a lot of a lot of these names, some of these names like Argo is actually kind of does look like a ship, but a lot of these names, the guys who were you know went south of the equator. Uh, they wanted to map the stars. They just kind of made up names. Sometimes they uh, they named stuff after shruggy emoticon. <laughs> um, Pictor, I think, is either the easel. I think it's the easel. Pedro Horologia, my mom was sure is the clock because horology is the study of time. Reticulum is not a rectangle. It's something else. But Calum, I, 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 Tucana is... So in this case, like the toucan here, um, has the constellation looks nothing like a toucan. But... When they went south and they found these birds that look, you know, toucans, they decided to name a constellation after it. So, really, a lot of these don't look anything like they're supposed to. Crux actually does look like a cross. It's the, it's the cross. Some people call it the Southern Cross, but it's actually the only cross that's actually a constellation. Uh, fishy, very fishy. Uh, <laughs> Era is the altar. Um, again. Um, Telescoping, and this is actually just this was just named to uh, uh, to honor the invention of the telescope, which I guess could be sort of nice, except that um, except that it looks nothing like a telescope. And microscopium for the microscope and all that. Okay, I'll be back in two and two. Okay, I'm back. Uh, one second here. Okay. And I agree with you. Ipos, of course, is the bird of paradise, uh, which is a bird that they found in the southern hemisphere. I don't know who decided that because there's a northern triangle, I think, um, they needed a southern one as well. Um, Gruss, I think, is the crane. Uh, the bird, the crane, not, not, not like a, a moving crane. So I guess we've got a lot of animals here. Now, this name, I'm surprised no one has really created a problem about. Indus, the Indian. And it refers to Native Americans, not the people from India. This was like one of our new discoveries in this age was the Native American, and we're going to make a constellation out of him. This is probably as offensive as, uh, no, Indus, I'm pretty sure is the Indian. Um, but now I'm getting in really into this, so I'm going to, there's actually a whole page about this I on NASA. So it's like not, you, oh. oh, this is actually the, okay, let's see. I'm going to sputter my way to, um, to the constellation pages here. Um, 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 I, 
I don't know, to be honest, but, um, okay, they, they have a really nice page about constellations, this is not it. And actually, I might be able to, um, I've downloaded some of their data, so. Mm. One thing is that uh, meteor showers are generally named, uh, you know, their point of origin is when the given constellation is how they're named. So the Geminid meteor showers have their um, origin point, the point where the meteors appear to come from, in Gemini, for example. So that might be one possible reason. Okay, I'm pretty sure that I have it bookmarked, so let's see if I can find it. There we are. Constantly, oh wait, it's even on a... No, that's not what I meant to do. Um, uh, is a swift, but... Okay. Wait, so Apus is not a bird of paradise? Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to get seriously worked up about this. Oh yeah, th th sorry, it's the International Astronomical Union that has this page on constellations. Um, there it is. Yes, it was probably a longer name. Um, so here is a list of all the constellations. The URL is right here. Or it's on the IAU page. It's not that hard to find. Um, Andromeda is, is Greek mythology. That's fine. Um, yeah, Apus is, oh, hang on, is there more than, genitive pronunciation, oh my god, I didn't even know this, but the Bird of Paradise, um, the, I've never heard it called the engraving tool, I thought it was, okay, maybe it is, there's another word for it, though, that's more popular than, um, the engraving tool, um, it's not a hatchet, but it's, um, Here's one, Camelopius, Camelopardellus. Is oh, okay, okay. Oh, so if you wanted to say it's in that, com oh, I see. If you wanted to use it in com combinative form, you would have to use this. Uh, there's the giraffe, Camelopardus, named similar to your name, Joffrey, um, and also the name of the Toys R Us giraffe. This is an other example of a modern constellation because in addition to not having names for southern constellations, there were gaps in northern constellations because there are places where there are very few stars in the, nor in the northern sky, and before IAU decided there were going to be areas, they were just bright stars. They were just collections of bright stars. So you had, you know, collection of bright stars here, collection of bright stars here. In the middle, no bunch of dull stars that didn't have a name. So they assigned them some artificial names like this. Um, you never let that drop, what, that they were, uh, that they're using the area. Oh, your name means the same as Joffrey the... Hey, I like that name, and Toys R Us is gone. You're the only living memory now of, uh, of Toys R Us. Um, oh yeah, Karina was the keel of the ship. I don't know what the keel actually is. Um, is the keel like the part, like the rudder? Or, if, if you know, tell me. Um, Cetus is called the sea monster. It's often depicted as a whale. But it's actually the sea monster. So, oh wait, Circinus is the compass. So where, what the hell is Pixis? I guess we'll find out. Dove, Coma Bernice's hair. The crow. Some of these actually are, are Dorado the swordfish kind of made up there. The little horse, um, the river. Fornax was the furnace. Gruss was the crane. That was the clock. Hor Horologium. Hydra, well I don't know, I didn't know Hydra was female, but okay. Oh, and Hydra is male. Okay, I thought Hydra was small and Hydra was large, but apparently it's female and male. And there it is, in this, the Indian. Not the Indian River, just the freaking Indian. Yep. The lizard lion, lesser lion, hair scales. I'm trying to find out what um, Pixis is, because that's the one I didn't know. The Table Mountain, except this is actually wrong now, because... Um, Mountain is Mons. This used to be Mons Mensa. So now it's technically just the table, but I guess they still call it that. The unicorn, the fly, the carpenter square. Four <laughs> for any four stars from the carpenter square. Um, the serpent bear, the hunter, 
peacock, winged horse, the hero of Greek mythology, the phoenix, picture of the painter's easel, the fishes, the stern. Oh, wait a minute. Do we have two compasses here? Oh, this is good. This is actually, I never noticed this before. All right, we have Sir Inicus. Is this still a constellation, though? Hang on. Let's see if this is a... Uh... Okay. I mean, if it's one of the, if it's listed here, it should be. I never noticed this before. Unless these are the same or some, or very similar. Um, no, there are two compasses in the sky. That F's things up nicely. That's so important, I'm actually going to make a note of it. That's something that's worth complaining about. And this just writes this to a file for later, for later, you know. There are two compasses in the sky, what the fuck? Um, it could be, that's true. Um, but I, I, I think it actually is, does stand for, for Native American. Well, um, but the people they thought were Indians when they went over uh, to the southern United States. Uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, there is somewhere, well, obviously somewhere, the IAU does not overly go into details on how these, this what I thought was a reticule, not the reticle. I don't even know what that is. Scorpion sculpture. Um... The sails, view of the sails, yeah, that's... Roland's the flying fish. And again, yeah, the problem here... Um, and I'm sure you could find a... Um, oh, wait a minute. What the hell is this? Ooh! This is probably less exciting than it seems. Um, so this is an explanation of why they did it, but it's more of an alibi at this point. Um, well, Pekka means little fox. I that I know that only because um, oh they don't have it here. I know that because I I know the constellation names. I don't know any Latin except for Capricornus is the sea goat. Although yeah, so I don't even know what the frick that is. Zing, Bazinga, missing something. I realize you can't type as fast as I can talk. Um, so I realize that it's harder for you to get out a, a concept really quickly. Um, I said something witty? Oh, wow, well, one in a million shot. Canis Vicente, the hunting dogs. Um, but we could actually look this up. Um, although I just, I just get the feeling it's going to be... Um, Uh, it does not it represents the Indian. Oh, okay. So apparently it is. It is uh, represents the Indian. Um, depicted index as a naked man holding arrows in both hands. Uh, that is just freaking brilliant, isn't it? The native savage man with weapons in his hands. Hi, yay, yay, yay. Um. This is a good page. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this. This could be an interesting source of, um, yeah. Um, oh shit, has that come out? Has the first episode of Picard come out? I really, really want to see it. Do not spoil it for me. Um, yeah, yeah, but I haven't seen it. I, I, I want to watch, I have a, I must have a, a note to myself to watch it. Yeah, 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 everyone dies. That, that happens at, like, pretty much every but shh, no spoiling it for me I'm gonna try to find it in fact let me go right now and I'm not going to the pirate bay and I'm not going to download it illegally so stand by well I do not do that actually I'll have to do that later because I have to turn off BitTorrent um, to, to do to stream 
Okay, interesting. But anyway, um, just, oh, oh, oh. Um, what do you mean Madagascar? Oh, good. So, so they, they, they missed both the real India and the Indian in the, in the Western Hemisphere. There are people from Madagascar. Or South Africa. And, and Alpha, the brightest star is called the Persian. God damn it, how do they get away with this? Um, how the hell do they... Um, you know, I think, I think if I were being obnoxious, I would try to, like, sort of anonymously plant this into the idea, the same people who don't like the Washington Redskins name, say, you know, these constellation names are really, really offensive. Uh, and the way they came about is offensive. We need to modernize the constellations or get rid of them entirely. Okay, I think that was a pretty good, pretty good, decent rant there. Um, um, I, you know, I don't... Because we we are really in an age now where people get really worked up about stuff like this, and the International Astronomical Union, I mean, even though they declared Pluto wasn't a planet and some people got upset with that, they're not really a very controversial organization, or they try not to be. Um, you get some people, and I mean not just not just in just the Indian, that's just one of them. But you could probably find other. Um, other examples of offensive constellation names. For example, Andromeda is the Chained Maiden. Literally, some B and D in the sky going on there. Now, yes, technically, uh, she was chained there by um, Medusa, who Perseus killed and rescued her. But really, weak female being rescued by male. Greek mythology, you know, is that is that is that female empowerment? And Virgo is either the maiden or the virgin. But either way, she is depicted as being, you know, what's wrong with having sex? Why can't Virgo have, why can't she be, you know, the hot stripper babe? Well, that's probably not good either, but, but you get the general idea. Um, Orion is the hunter who actually killed uh, Scorpius the scorpion. Uh, very, very bad there. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a virgin per se, but the idea that all women have to be pure or chained to rocks or, you know, it's, it's very, it's very, I think, anti-feminist. That's, that's how I'm going to sell it to the women. Um, and why aren't there more women in the sky who aren't virgins or being tied to rocks or whatever? That's a bad thing. Um, yeah, but I mean, these constellation names are only a couple hundred years old. I mean, I, I really, there's no need for them. Um, if people want to see pictures in the sky, that that's fine. Um, and at one point, I actually tried to draw dirty pictures in the sky, uh, but I couldn't as dirty as my mind is, um, I couldn't do it. Although, it turns out there is an author, and I think I did a blog entry on this, who sees Capricorn as a bikini. It kind of does look like one, but the fact that a serious astronomical author uh, of 365 starry nights, um, yeah, yeah, the purity of the stars over them, it's just ridiculous. They're, they're just, they're points in the light sky. They have right ascensions, declinations, J2000, you know, that's fine. We, we know where they are. We don't need to put artificial boundaries. And then there's the whole concept of nationalism, constellationism. Why do we have to separate the stars with boundary lines? Why cannot the stars live together in peace and harmony? Um, a grid map would be fantastic. I mean, th th they already have that. Uh, right ascension and declination. Uh, there's really no need again to say split it into like, you know, 18 degrees, 10 degrees at a time, 10 degrees the other way. That, that would work too. But but there's, I mean, there's no need to do that. We just, we just don't need names for them. We just know where they are. We don't need to put them inside of uh, funny boundaries. Uh, and why is Serpens, because Serpens, uh, you know, is a special case because he or she or it, um, I am pissed off about this. Plus, it's a hell of a lot easier talking about this than it is doing actual coding. So I'm always happy about that. Serpens is a special case. Um, he is split into two pieces, head and tail. The doctor, Ophiascus, is holding him, put 
his tail, Kada his head. I think you probably knew that. Um, he's split in two. He's broken. And, and it's the only constellation that is non-contiguous, which again, why make that one exception? Plus, you're breaking the snake. Not good. Hunting dogs here, you know. Uh, Pegasus probably we can get away with. It's a, it's a magic horse. Uh, Equilus is a tiny horse. Sagat is an arrow, a little fox. Um, Lilir, Cygnus is a small, we could probably get away with the Cygnus and stuff. Draco's a dragon, you could probably get away with that. Um, Cephas is a king, but I don't think it's going to harm, uh, let's see. Oh, they do. I mean, Hercules is its own constellation. Um, somewhere over here. Where the hell did he go? Well, he's here somewhere. But this guy is literally holding a, uh, you know, literally holding a snake torn into two pieces. Um, all right, thank you. I usually stream until I get sick to death of it. Um, he's by, oh, is, is he? Oh, there he is, yeah. Um, I don't think anyone's ever... Wow. I don't think I've ever heard the interpretation that it's Hercules. Well, okay, because he, Hercules doesn't quite touch the head of the serpent. Uh, Ophiophagus is the only constellation that touches both serpents, Kata and Kaput. But anyway. Um, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, and I'm hoping feminists and other social justice warriors, SJWs as they are, um, although you can't really call them that because it offends them, will um, we'll find this map as offensive as I do and call on the International Astronomical Union to, uh, to change or eliminate these names entirely. I have a dream. Um, oh, Hercules we know had the 12 tasks. Or was it 8 tasks? So he had some number of tasks. Um, and I didn't know that killing a snake... Well, no, that, wasn't, that was one of the tasks, though. He just did that, right? That was just basically brutality as a baby. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, for the, so he just he just did it. And, like he's a kid as a baby. I'm guessing there's some story that the snake tried to bite him or something. Because I mean, otherwise, it would just be cruel to tear apart snakes. Um, although, as you know from living here, rattlesnakes can be quite dangerous. Uh, they've mostly moved out of the city, but uh, you know. Okay, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to let myself go and do a two-minute walk, or less than a two-minute walk actually, and come back. Thank you for watching the stream. If you're somebody other than Joffrey, the stream is not over. Uh, we're just I'm taking a break, and Joffrey is going to go do something vastly more interesting. And you should probably just follow him. In fact, if you want to tell us what stream you're going to, anybody else who's watching this can go to that stream as well. Or if it's recorded or whatever. All right, back in two and two. Okay, and I'm back. Um, well, thanks for telling everybody else to stay here. Of course, if you're watching this recorded on YouTube, not really an issue. Okay. Whew. Calming down now. Okay. 
So what we want to do is find the largest declination that is smaller than the given declination. For that declination, find out what boundary lines there are. Good so far. Um, and I kind of forgot what the output was, but okay, there it is. Um, and then the J value is um, min RA comma max RA. So split it. Split on comma. Did I put a space in there? I might have actually. Um, no, I didn't. I, I just pretty did it pretty straight. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so it's just going to be split on the comma. I think I've got to backslash it because comma has a special meaning to Perl. Regular expressions. Um, J. And then... Here's where if... RA is greater than min RA and and RA is less than max RA and I probably need to add equality conditions but I think I can get away with not doing that. Um, now the cool thing is bounds IJ is going to be just the constellation name. So I can do that. Now so what happens if you end up over here? No, that's fine. Um, So if you get through this entire list and then you still haven't found a constellation, um, we need to complain. Okay. And so we'll say debug. Const th we're, we're debugging the same value multiple times, so it's not and I know that, and that's okay, because we're just testing. Everything's okay, because we're just testing. Okay, no constellation boundary found, because this is not what we're expecting. Um, okay. I sense some slight weirdness here, because I, the deck values should not be this high. And the weirdnesses are because, of course, these values here are already multiplied by 3600. There's no need to multiply them by 3600 again. Um, so we'll not do that. Um, okay. So let's see what this does. It's kind of nice that it's running const every time. Might be more useful if it actually... Oh. Oh, it is working. It's returning const 16. Um, now, the hope here is when we're this far north, it should be returning Ursa ma minor every time. So now, let's see if this array here... God damn it. I mean, I could make this shorter by removing the spaces after the commas, but that's not really what I want to do here. So we should be able to get this from the names array. I bet you Emacs has a method of collapsing code so you don't have to see the whole damn line. Um, so here we're going to return names of bound z of i of j. i and j. Okay. Boogie. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty damn sure this should be, or some, let's go ahead and take a look at where CFI is, but I'm pretty damn sure uh, for this very, very northern chunk here, we should only be returning Ursa Minor. So either I'm off by one in my um, computations, which it doesn't look like, because Ursa Minor is way the hell down there. Or I've screwed something up, which is much more likely. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, so this takes the position between this and the next. Um, okay, so this should be like. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I guess one question I would have is where exactly are the boundaries for Ursa Minor? Um, and see, it seems to me like this right here, 84, and that does sound like where Ursa Minor is. And this right here is where Ursa Minor is. And that actually seems like it, it's valid. 84 means fifth or sixth from the last. That, that's where we're seeing it. Okay. So, uh, whatever I'm doing, I'm not testing the right values down here. Either I've missed declinations, the highest declination by some number or something. Let's take a quick look here. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, right ascension 120, uh, declination 30, 13, one for this, which is 87.25. Not cool. There should definitely, that's an interesting question. What should the highest declination be? And that is, you can't see it from here. Um, I think the highest, I mean, Ursa Minor. Hmm. That could actually be correct. 87.25. So let's. Um, actually, let's take a look at the raw boundaries of UMI. Okay. Yeah, so the highest boundary line is 86.167. Um, so what is the problem here in fine constellations? Uh... Okay, hang on, this is probably wrong. Um, largest declination that is still smaller than the given declination. So this is, if I is too big, go next, but that's not really correct. This has to be, um, let's see. Yeah, so we need to actually, um, look to see if uh, the, d the declination um, below it... Okay, so we've, we've kind of gone backwards here, unfortunately. All right, so let's go ahead and make this um, a loop uh, that goes from zeros to the number of decks, and then we could say... Um, okay, so the, the way we need to find this out is if, if dollar sign i is greater than dex of dollar sign i minus 1 then next. So in other words, uh, nope, i plus 1. So as we're going down, if you're, if you're still bigger than the next one, you can keep going. If you're not bigger than the next one, then you're smaller than or equal to the next one, and then you have to go through this, um, all right. So then we have to go through this, um, And that's not what I mean at all. Um, if the declination is bigger than the next declination, you keep going. So we stop at the point where the next declination is smaller or equal. Uh, and for that declination, which is now um, dec of i, um, we find all the things that are mounds. Um, I would be very surprised if this works. Yeah. Okay. If deck is bigger than the next one, um... So as we're going down the list, we want to find 
Um, yeah, we want to find the first one that you're not bigger than. So let's see what that is. Okay, so... Alrighty. And that should be... Okay, that's right. That's that's correct. That's the, what we should be finding. Eighty-six point five. So we now have this. Um, do I mean plus one here? And am I getting? Is this getting really really ugly now? I think I do mean plus one here, plus one here, and I'm I'm this close to rewriting this for being excessively complicated. Um, And in fact, no, I because if it's possible that the maximum declination less the smaller than this one doesn't have a boundary at the given at the right right ascension. So, let's see what this does. Yeah, we're we're kind of killing this here now. Um, we're also getting way too many debugging statements in here, so let's comment some of these suckers out. Uh, fine, con this is fine. Constellation next. Okay, declinations one point is less, and so. Um, so I guess this is um, this is where the bad thing is happening. And the very first one's going to be like zero to eighty-six thousand five four hundred, so it's going to be like the whole. Um, it, th this is a this condition should not fail at all can't can't fail uh, because already must be I could put equal signs in there but it, I sh really shouldn't have to because we're we're doing a split um, okay three one four hundred bounds of deck I plus one so have I somehow messed this up. Um, well, let's take a look here. So show me this hash. I might just have re referenced it incorrectly, but, uh, okay, that really isn't cool. Wait, that can't even happen. Um, how could printing this value change anything? Well, that was fun. All right, hang on. So we don't even get to, um, oh yeah, it would be nice that even if we didn't debug it, we actually called it. Yeah. Okay. Find cost. Well, yeah, it'd be good if we, you know, I don't know how expensive the constellations are, but maybe find co cost would have been a better. Uh, no boundary found. Okay. So we do have a declination value here of three one four hundred. That's cool. Um, the bounds do, do not seem to exist. Um, so let's see if we can just do this. This should be a. Um, this should be a, uh, it should give me a hash ref, but it doesn't. Alrighty. Lots of fun. Um, and I get the feeling I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Um, I, it should be bounds, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Hmm. And do I mean to say DEXA? I almost definitely do. Um, there we go. By the way, Perl does have a minus W option that helps you find stupid mistakes. Unfortunately, I program so badly that it doesn't just find the mistakes I want to find. It, it finds all my mistakes, and there are an infinite number of those. 
Okay. And once again, this is good. I've actually, um, so deck, that is actually deck. That is actually deck. That's decks, 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 decks. I feel like I'm talking about US decks, uh, the uh, phone directory or the phone server. Okay. Um, min RA, max RA. Okay. Hmm. Getting closer. Okay. Okay, okay. So why is there... Oh, here we are. Um, okay. Let's just go ahead and do it once and then kill out of it because clearly it's not working even with one example, but it should be easier to debug with one example. Okay. Find constellation 123140314100. Um... deck lower, so this is a declination that is lower than it. Okay, gonna Pomodoro myself, back in two and two. And I'm back. Okay. So we are no closer to a solution. Always good. So find constellation. Um, we should be getting a deck lower here. Um, so we do call this thing once. I mean, that, that is good. Um, okay, well, mm, I get the feeling I'm doing this test backwards, but let's find out. Oh. Yes, that is the backwards test. Okay, so what we're saying here is if declination is smaller than the next, um, uh, 
is smaller than the next declination, we've gone too far. Nope, nope, that's not true either. So, all right. Um, I'm pretty sure this test is reversed, but I need to figure out what I'm doing here. Um, if declination is less than the current declination, you should keep going. I think that's that's what I'm saying. Um, because you're trying to find something that is less than you. So this is actually... I, I double left this up. And I'm going to have to fix it. But at least we'll get back our dollar sign eyes if this works. Um, so let's see if this actually does what we want. Good. It did find the one that's lower. Um, now let's be careful here. Um, and so now we're going to go through the bounds at this lower declination. Um, and I will go ahead and correct it in this comment on the off, ch off chance we're going to use it for debugging. All right. Um, yeah, I guess what bugs me here is I really, really expected to see a 0 to 86,400 here, which we're not seeing. Because um, the very, it looks to me, and I could be wrong here, but the very top, um, oh no, that's actually not what that says. Yeah, it is. So 0 to 86,400 at 316,800, and we are at mm, 16,800. So I probably have my list of declinations incorrect here somehow. Um, the highest declination I should see should be, you know, 316,800. So let's see what the hell's going on. Um, okay, this, all right, let's take a look at our decks here, and later we'll take a look at our ants. That is uh, another ant and deck joke. So the very highest number we have here is this, which I think translates to 88 degrees. Yep, good deal. So the very first number we should be testing against um, Yeah, that was kind of stupid. All right, one more time. Okay, so this is this is actually backwards, so this is okay. This will be the um, highest number, I would think, unless I misunderstood how... Um, yeah, this should be the highest number. Um, for every RA, I'm pretty sure this test needs to be reversed. Um, I don't really break anything, the, the fact that it's not, but it's going to be weird. So let's go ahead and do this for every... Um, do this like this and flip the sense of the test. So find constellation where the RA is 43,200. What the hell? Oh, uh, sorry, I do need this. I do need the one here because uh, we're using the, um, we're taking the average of this one and the previous one, and that means they have to start with one. Okay, so that's cool. Um, um, 
So I guess one question is why is our highest declination um, this this weird number? And I guess the only the issue here is we maybe we don't have the 90th degree declination um, defined anywhere, and we really do need it for for this purpose. Um, And that does make sense, because these are lower declination lines, but our little square thingies need to start at the very top. So they really need to start with, um, uh, let's see. So this is, um, so this is reverse, so the highest number is the first number, uh, and the lowest number well, let's take a quick look to see if minus 90 is in there, which it should be, because it is the lower uh, limit of, uh, of well, literally the only thing that's the lower limit of is octans, but still. Um, so that, I think, is the problem there. This is where we're going to see minus 90. But there's no plus 90, and we really do need to start our little gridding system uh, at plus 90, so the first declination will be like 89 or something. So that is the problem. Um, this is just to get plus 90 into the dex list. So we'll say bounds of 90 times 3600. Um, I mean, technically, this is correct. Um, there's no constellation there, but we can still say that it's a theoretical range, at least. Alrighty, 300 trillionth time is the charm. Uh, okay. Okay, so it looks like we did get that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this to git, just to be safe. This is way harder than I thought it would be, honestly. I thought this would be like a five minute thing. I mean, I often think that, but um, um, but I really didn't think it was going to be this bad. Okay. Alrighty. There's probably a way to actually get this. Um, almost sure this isn't going to work. I don't think you can. It probably isn't quite that nice in terms of letting you do a. Um, in terms of letting you interpolate a function call. Um, I'm going to. Uh, this is not going to work. Although maybe I can make it work. Yeah, this isn't going to work. You might be able to make it work by doing. Like putting an ampersand in there. I, I still don't think it's going to work though. Yeah, that was a bit of a long shot. So we'll go ahead and put that outside of the... Uh, well, it'll be on a separate line now. Okay. Or some minor, or some minor, or some minor. Okay, okay, good. Good, 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 good. And by the way, before I forget, I'm going to put a to-do here and how we're going to test it. And we're going to test it using well-known stars in these constellations. Um, which we have a list of, so that's not going to be an issue. In fact, I think we could probably use the equatorial list that we used earlier for the stars uh, in um, the heliacal rising thing. Okay. So. So now... Now we can just do this. Join with a space, the list, RA test, deck test. And this is an actual print. This is the output of the program. Well, I mean, it's the output of the program right now. Um, and let's rock and roll, see what happens. Okay, would be good to put a new line in there. Um... 
and we put that after the join statement. Okay, fantastic. I had nothing unexpected here. Whoa, okay. Why are we getting... Oh, 0.5 is actually probably okay because... Um, because we are taking the average of two of the points. So it, it, it can be that. Okay, C5. We're saying minor again. Um, it's at the very least giving us different answers, which is fantastic. Um, so now what we want to do is... Uh, let's see. Let's so we get all the way down to, um, that's going to be a long freaking list. Uh, actually, this should be something like, um, I think we said 26,000 earlier, but it looks like it's going to be bigger than that, doesn't it? Um, and I realize I could just pipe it to WC and be done with it. Um, or was it going to be like 80,000 or something? Well, we're in negative, we're in negative declinations now. Now we're getting to some of the southern constellations here. And there we are. Octans is there. Okay. So now. Now what we actually kind of wanted to do is put this all into an array. Um, eventually that we're going to use in, in C. Um, so I am... And the more I think about it, we don't really need a separate file for this. We could just literally put it into C as an array of arrays. Um, okay, by the way, thermometer's telling me that it's a 104.4 degrees here. Um, so that means that the thermometer's broken. Um, it's kind of interesting, though. Usually it just fades out. Unless, of course, my neighbor's house is on fire. But they'll have to deal with that on their own. Okay. So now these represent dex times RA. This is the number of um Now one question is Can you declare a two-dimensional? I think you can actually de declare a two-dimensional array in C just by giving the um, just by giving the array parameters. I don't think you need to declare the size because you're declaring it as a constant. Um, so if that's true and by the way find constellation should really be uh, not returning a name uh, but, a, but a number that this just for testing that it was returning this. Um, In fact, we could have it be a single dimensional array and just figure out where the, um, like a file, and just figure out where the, uh, the, appropriate, uh, the appropriate constellation is. So that's interesting. Um, so if that's true, we should just be able to print out the declinations in... In probably doesn't matter. I think descending order is fine. It's not going to really matter, though. The right ascensions, again, multiplied by 3600, in uh, rising order doesn't, again, doesn't really matter. And then the list of constellations corresponding to places in those declinations and right ascensions. I don't know if C has a built-in binary search function, uh, because if these arrays are sorted, we kind of want to be able to... Um, we kind of want to be able to say uh, use the sorting and uh, 
and not have to search linearly through the arrays, although they're probably not that big, actually. Okay. So here, we're going to say... Do I want to save this? And... Um... Let's see if this does what I want. It probably will not. That's not as ugly as I thought it was. All right, let's see if we can now, uh, I think we already had a BC C. We were actually taking a shot at it. Um, and is this in the right? It's probably even a higher directory though. Um, So we have our minimalist uh, main statement for right now. And then we're going to try... Okay, Pomodoro back in 2 and 2. Okay, and I'm back. Let me take a quick look to see how long I've been streaming for an hour and 40. I think I'll go over another 15, uh, 20 minutes and we will call it. All right, let's see if we can do this. And... Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Well, it's compiled. Obviously, it's not going to do anything right now. Okay. And I think in order to make this compile properly... Oh, this is going to be ugly. I don't think I can create a symbolic link from here. I'm going to do it over here in my other machine where you can't see it. Uh, but it should at least show up. Um, it should show up here on this machine as well. And that means I can use, the reason I want to do that is because I want to use my standard sort of make program here. There we go. BC Constel. Okay. Won't do anything, but I mean, you know. It does show that the array can be accepted. Now the question is, um, I'm tempted to add like a, a, a frame, but we'll leave it the way it is for right now. Um, 
we're going to assume these are J2000 coordinates, but that's probably not going to be an issue. Okay, so now the question is, can I declare this as a... Because I don't want to declare stuff in the... No, your mama. I don't want to declare stuff in the na main namespace. Oh, cool, there is no filling in C. So can I declare this as a static um, array inside of constellation number? And the hope is yes. Unused, ra okay, well, yes. Control, re okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, there's two problems here. One is I never used X, but I'm probably okay with that. And the other thing is I promised to return an integer, and I'm not. And just to make these things happy, we'll just print out two of these values for absolutely no good reason except to get rid of that error message. Okay, good. Not good. Um. Oh, I never actually called this function, do I? Okay, now let's see what happens. Yay. Totally useless, but yay. Okay, and then I guess we can do that with our right ascensions as well. Uh, this is a declining list. Um... And so let's let's go ahead and print out um, uh, static int stack. Um, I don't actually need to put even the trivial. The I don't need to put new lines there. So this is this. And let's just do that for right now. Um, and then I guess we, we ultimately we want to print out this um, this list of constellation uh, numbers here. The uh, the yeah the list of constellation numbers that are defined by blah 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 okay static int consts equals and then we'll have okay I'm going to be so obnoxious about this. Push const. Okay, we're going to do my const up here. And we won't print it till later. And push consts. Um, and then over here, we can do exactly the same. Th oh, I still need to do that, though. And over here, we can do exactly the same thing, and this will be the... Uh, Consts equal join consts. All right, so if this works, we have a pretty good first step here. Assuming I know what the hell I'm doing. Include me. In all your reindeer games, man. Okay, it's taking a really long time here, but I think that might be okay. Ah, yes. Because, of course, Constellation should not be returning that. It should be returning um, the number. Then we'll need another function to actually um, convert the number into a Constellation, but that maybe it's not such a huge deal. So let's go ahead and erase that. 
not do that, but instead just do the bounds. Okay. Again, taking a fraction of a second there. Oddly enough, I think that's correct. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty damn big array, but it is, I think, correct. I guess if we're going to do this, we might as well um, put in the constellation names, because there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to... Um, yeah, I could see why, why Brandon wanted to make this into a file. Um, okay, and we might as well make the constellation names a character array as well. Um, okay. And and I think we only really want the first three, the first word in all caps. That's sort of the standard way of doing this. Um, unfortunately, until we get serpents kata and kaput there, we don't get serpents split into two. Uh, let's see. So that one we can do fairly early here. Um, I think that's just called names, right? Nia names. Um, actually, I think. Oh. No, I'm going to be careful here. I'm going to go ahead and create a separate array called print names. I'll say I equals substitute anything after the space to the end. And then dollar sign i equals to upper. Nope, that's not. It's uc in, in Perl. uc dollar sign i. And then, or actually I could just push it at this point. Push print names. Okay, and then we need to say a similar print statement, except now for names. Um, let's do it this way. I'd be a little bit careful here because this is a array of strings, which should work. Okay, solid. If we get this going, we should be able to do the rest of the work here, assuming this actually compiles, assuming this program actually runs. And it occurs to me I probably forgot to do quotation marks. Yep, I rock. Um, okay. When in doubt, cheat. So convert this to the its uppercase. And then here, we will push this, which should be the correct thing to push. Nope. it's not what I meant to say. Um, we need interpolation, so we need to put the real quotes there, and then we can put insert. Actually, let's use this nasty function of... Um, if you put QQ in front of something, you can use anything you want as a quote delimiter. And that is a special function that uh, Perl has that confuses everybody. Okay. I suppose we'll put a new line between them, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Temp include... Oh, I already did that, didn't I? <laughs> I'm a moron. Um... And at this point, we're going to get tons of them that aren't going to... I will go ahead and put new lines in here, but um, this is a nice little chunky piece of code here. Yeah, this is this is a really big. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's a big array, but I mean, doesn't you know? C is not phased by this. Uh, this is just ugly code, is all. But I don't see an easy way to make it easier. Um, we could replace these with characters and have a character string in here, or with a file, but it's it's the same amount of data. 
it just looks a little bit different. Okay, so now I don't think it like that. Did it actually make BC Constell? Um, okay, I am suspicious. Oh my god. Alright, let me make like a one character change to make sure that uh, it really did compile. Okay, this might be an issue of... Mm, am I not getting the proper kind of uh, a link here? No, it looks fine. Alright. Stand by, stand by. And I'm wondering if now I have to kind of... Okay. Here we go. Un un unused. That's fine. That's just a warning. Although it's a freaking huge warning, but still. Now yeah, that was not a bright move. Anyway, I'm just going to pretend that it worked. Okay, so now the question is, um, assuming all this actually worked, um, now the question is given a right ascension and declination. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually do a hide region in, in, in Emacs. This is a bad idea. And I could have tested with something. Oh, Jesus effing Christ. Mm. Region. Nope, can't do anything with the region. Let's see if what, what there is for the word hide. Um, hmm, nothing super useful here. Anyway, okay. So now what we need to do is if we were actually given an RA and a, and a declination, we need to see, we, well, we need to multiply it by um, 3600. Actually, we need to do a little bit more than that. No, actually, I think that's fine because we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing doubled integer comparisons anyway. Okay. Now the question is: Is there an easy sort of a binary um, a binary search in in an array for C, or do we have to write one? It, and if we do, if we have to write one, we can always go through the arrays directly until we find uh, where the right ascension is is bigger or smaller or whatever. So let's see. Binary search array C. Oh god, please, please do not tell me that this does not already exist. Nope, it doesn't. Okay, so we're going to do this really inefficiently. Um, we're going to go um, Is it length of array? Jesus Christ. So we're basically going to go through the array and declination, find out which chunk this is in. Um, but I'm getting sick to death of this. 
So, thank you for watching the stream. We will pick this up next time, if there is a next time. Almost definitely not tonight. Thank you for watching, and good night.